The latest from Kim Kardashian is that she has been hyping up radio frequency microneedling. Y'all know Kim, she likes to try out a bunch of different cosmetic procedures. She's the one who popularized the vampire facial a while back. Anyways, in this video, we're gonna do a deep dive into what exactly radio frequency microneedling entails, how does it work, what are the benefits, and who should avoid it. But before deep diving into all of that, make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you like skincare content from a board certified dermatologist. Be sure you're subscribed and you have your bell notifications on so you know as soon as my videos go live. Radio frequency microneedling offers several potential benefits. It's frequently used to improve the appearance of acne scars as well as scars from a prior operation. It can improve the appearance of stretch marks, saggy skin on the face, the body. It can tighten upper eyelid skin, diminish the appearance of pores, improve skin texture and skin tone, and is often used to smooth upper lip lines. Radio frequency microneedling kind of combines two two types of treatment into one procedure, microneedling and radiofrequency. Microneedling or percutaneous collagen induction involves creating tiny puncture wounds in the skin with little tiny needles that create these channels of skin injury and stimulate the body's healing responses. Ultimately, that improves collagen production in the skin. This is a treatment that is frequently used for wrinkles, fine lines, as well as improving the appearance of scars. I have videos going into detail about microneedling, so I'm not gonna reiterate all of that in this video. Whereas radio frequency is an energy-based device that uses radio frequency energy delivered to the skin to generate heat in the deeper layers of the skin, stimulating collagen production and elastin production. With radio frequency microneedling, the same radio frequency energy is being delivered to the skin, but this time it's via needles. When delivered to the skin, radio frequency energy creates an electrical charge in the skin and you get movement of electrons. This heats the skin because there's some resistance to the flow and the movement of those electrons. And that's gonna vary depending on the location, the thickness of the skin, how much pressure is applied, as well as what type of device is being used. You have monopolar devices and bipolar devices. That's a lot of technical jargon, but suffice it to say that with bipolar radio frequency, the depth of penetration is a lot shallower. Whereas with monopolar radio frequency, the radio frequency is much deeper but tends to be less uncomfortable for the patient. Radio frequency microneedling may also have the potential for enhancing delivery of topical medications to the skin. Why choose this over radio frequency alone or microneedling alone? The advantage of radio frequency microneedling is that there are a lot more parameters that the dermatologist can tweak to make it better suited for your skin type as well as for the particular concern that is being addressed. There are a variety of settings that can be tailored to affect the energy delivery. For example, you can tailor the amount of energy, the number of hertz, the number of needles, and the amount of time of exposure. You also can tailor the type of needles. There are insulated needles, non-insulated needles, and semi-insulated needles. These are all beneficial because when it comes to treating people with deeper skin tones who are prone to hyperpigmentation, energy-based devices have to be approached with caution because of the potential risk for worsening hyperpigmentation. Using insulated needles, a longer exposure time and lower amount of energy, lower number of hertz, make it overall a safer option for people with deeper skin tones. With this procedure, you're gonna go in and they're gonna apply a topical numbing cream. That takes about an hour to kick in. After that's kicked in, the procedure itself takes roughly 20 minutes. But depending on the type of device you use, you're gonna need two to five treatments spaced four to six weeks apart. You may start seeing improvement though after one to two treatments. And of course, continued improvement may be observed in the following six to 12 months. Immediately after the procedure, it's to be expected that you're going to have redness, a little bit of swelling. You may even have some pinpoint bleeding depending on, again, the location and the parameters used. You may then have some crusting 
All of this typically lasts anywhere from a few days to two weeks. If you're having this, you wanna be really careful that you don't pick at any potential scabs that form because that can slow down healing, put you at risk for infection. It's also possible that you have some bruising. Again, that's gonna depend on where you have this done. Now, as with any procedure, there's always the possibility of side effects. Possible side effects that might occur with radiofrequency microneedling include infection, prolonged grid marks, scarring, pigmentary alteration, and folliculitis, which is an acne-like breakout. Who should avoid this procedure? What are the contraindications to radiofrequency microneedling? Remember, in the case of radiofrequency microneedling, you're delivering energy to the skin. A contraindication is if you have a pacemaker, because that can interfere with the functioning of your pacemaker. If you have a history of making keloids readily, this is not gonna be a good treatment for you. Any active skin infection, not gonna be the right time to do this. If you if you've ever had gold threads for a thread lift in the area, that would be a contraindication because again, you're generating energy and heat and that metal in, in the skin could actually conflict with that and cause problems. It's contraindicated in pregnancy and breastfeeding. If you have any type of metal implant in the treatment area, this would not be a good option for you. Likewise, if you have any embedded electronic device that cannot be turned off, Radio frequency is not a great option because again, that energy could interfere with the functioning of that device. If you have been on an isotretinoin, brand name Accutane here in the States, in the past six months, not the time to do radio frequency microneedling. We typically reserve uh, this type of procedure till six months after isotretinoin has been completed. Uh, due to theoretical risk of complications with scarring in that early stage. Of course, if you have any allergy to any components of the treatment, that would be a contraindication. One would definitely wanna proceed with caution if you have any tattoos in the area that you plan to have treated because many tattoo inks have metals in the pigment and the metals can conduct heat from the radio frequency that can lead to skin injury and extrusion of the tattoo ink. You wanna let your doctor know if you have a history of cold sores, if you're having this done on the face, or if you have a history of herpes breakouts elsewhere on the body where the procedure is going to take place, because in that case, your doctor would likely want to prescribe you an antiviral medicine prior to the procedure to reduce the risk of this happening. Most providers are going to counsel you to avoid using a topical retinoid at least seven days prior to the procedure, if not a little bit early. Always discuss that with them. Again, it's going to depend on the site that you're having treated. If you've had any neurotoxin or filler in the past two weeks, that would be another thing to proceed with caution for. If you have an underlying autoimmune disease and may be a little bit more cautious and conservative, if you have an underlying bleeding disorder, or if you have neuropathy, or if you have a condition that leads to poor healing like diabetes, for example. If you'll recall, recently I did a video on the top eight things you wanna ask before going for any cosmetic procedure. And you'll recall from that video how I pointed out it's really important that you clarify that the provider has gone through your medical history. In the case of this procedure, they definitely are gonna to wanna to know if you've had any history of herpes outbreaks, cold sores. If you're on any medications, make sure you tell them any dietary supplements you're on because a lot of dietary supplements, you don't think about this, but they actually can make you more at risk for bleeding. So the provider may instruct you to stop taking those in advance of the procedure. And you wanna tell them of any procedures that you've had in the area, whether it be a filler or Botox, cause that can be something that they wanna, may wanna tread lightly on. All right, you guys, that is radio frequency microneedling. The gist of it, how it works, what all it entails, what to expect as far as the number of treatments. Of course, the cost of this procedure is going to vary depending on where you live and the extent of treatment that you're gonna have done, how many treatments, that will vary quite a bit. But overall, this is a nice treatment in that it can be a bit more tailored depending on your skin type, and it can address numerous skin concerns, whether it be scarring, uh, loose skin on the face or body, cellulite, stretch marks, enlarged pores, skin texture, and skin tone. If the settings are tailored correctly, it is a relatively safe option for people who have a deeper skin tone, whereas other energy-based devices come with a larger risk of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Let me know in the comments if this is a procedure that you have thought about, heard about, curious about. I hope this was informative for you guys. 
On the end slide, I'm actually going to put my recent video on the top eight questions you wanna ask, you wanna clarify before considering any cosmetic procedure. So definitely check that one out. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.